Today, we're at 25 Railroad Ave in Greenwich, Connecticut at the world famous Carriage House Motor Cars lot. I'm so excited to be here because these are some of the most expensive, luxurious cars that you can find anywhere. If you're a car enthusiast, if you're grown up playing with cars, you're gonna love a place like the Carriage House in Greenwich, Connecticut, where you can see and understand and learn about some of the most iconic vehicles ever. Let's check it out. Hey Kyle, thank you so much for having us at the iconic Carriage House here in Greenwich, Connecticut. So tell us a little bit about the Carriage House. Yeah, well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Carriage House now has uh, been in this location since 1985. Um, we've been in business over 52 years, and we were really famous because we were the world's largest Rolls and Bentley dealership in, in Manhattan. Oh, wow. Uh, so we had two locations and then decided uh, in about 1995 to come up here and just stay in Greenwich and, and solely focus on just staying here and being a part of this great community. Now this is a, this is a totally different kind of car dealership. This is much more boutique. You, you, you named it, you, you kind of gave it a category before we were talking about it. How did, how did you kind of explain what we're selling? Here? Yeah, absolutely. We're selling jewelry here, you know. Uh, we're not selling transportation. Um, yeah. You know, people aren't driving these to use every day. Uh, this is really about a passion and, and, and a craft that people have and it's also a great investment. Uh, some of the cars are iconic, they're extremely rare, super valuable, and uh, people need them either for a collection um, or it's something that they saw when they were a kid and they just have to have. So, so there's a lot more to it than, than just an actual car. Yeah. So This is a lifestyle, this is a collectible, These are this is like a dream for a lot of people. Absolutely, I mean people live and breed certain brands. Some people are just Porsche guys, some yeah. people are uh, general automotive people, you know, where they'll have cars from the 60s all the way up to new modern supercars. And we can tailor to that. We don't just specialize in just classic cars. We can get something from the 20s all the way up to brand new limited edition, you know, just produced from manufacturers. So we really cater to people um, as long as it's pretty shiny and beautiful, we, we can deal with it. All right, so. awesome. So let's get into what we have. I know that the showroom is pretty substantial. Uh, here in Greenwich, so why don't we start in this room, like what's some of the cool cars that we have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we really have to talk about this beauty that we're standing right next to. We, we stuck it in the window because not only is it such an iconic car, it's a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL, but this car is actually one of seven in this color. It's called light blue. Wow. Um, so this is one of seven ever produced. This car was fully restored by a gentleman by um, Rudy, uh, and the company's Rudy and Company. Uh, they fully restored just 300 SLs. And so they did a full restoration, including all new mechanics and paint and interior. Um, and then when you're looking at something of this vintage, this age, yeah. that's what you want to look at, quality. quality. You want someone who's um, a master at their craft when they're working. You just don't want any type of uh, facility to be working on something like this. Uh, a 300 SL is very complicated in terms of its mechanics. Yep. It, it's got direct fuel injection. Uh, it, it, it's got a slant six three liter engine, uh, a manual four speed gearbox. So, so there's a lot of complex uh, bits and pieces that go into it, and, and it's a puzzle when it comes a, when it's apart. Yeah. So you want a, a master craft who's able to put together that puzzle in a perfect specimen, and that's so what we cool. have here. And sticker price? The price on this is $1,485,000. $1,485,000. for this gorgeous, one of seven in its color. In this color, yeah, absolutely. And so, how does the carriage house get to broker this car? Is it, um, they get it put in the showroom and then you broker it between a, a seller? Actually, we're, because we're such an old and an established business, we actually purchase vehicles. So okay. this is something that we've purchased. Um, we kept it in our collection for about seven years. At the end of the day, we're car enthusiasts. So, yeah. we, so we buy cars just to keep them and use them. We display them at shows. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, automotive event here in town called the Greenwich Concourse. Yes. Uh, they ask us to display cars. And this is one of them that we brought to the Greenwich Concourse. We've won a few awards with it. Um, 
to, and that wow. also explains the quality of cars that that we deal with. Is you know we deal with the you know high quality yeah. award winning cars. I love the the color is amazing. The, the color is fantastic. And the interior, absolutely. It's the contrast, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's very German to call it light blue. You know, they, <laughs> you know they, they don't want a, a, a name like aquamarine, yeah, just no. light blue. Beautiful, um, beautiful. All right, so that's amazing. So this is 1.485. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and while we're right here, you know, we yeah. can talk about this kind of subtle, um, almost uh, underlying car. You wouldn't know uh, that this car is so rare and so valuable just by looking at it. Okay. Uh, this is a 1969 Maserati Ghibli Spider. Wow. They only made 125 factory spiders. Holy cow. So that makes it a very rare car. This was kind of Maserati's counterpunch to the Ferrari Daytona. This has a 4.8 liter um, V8 engine, a five speed manual gearbox. It's got power steering, disc brakes. The beauty of this is the lines. It was designed by Pininfarina. Pininfarina was an Italian coach builder. And, and they really pen this car with a sharp edge, but you can kind of see curvature in the body. Yeah. Um, so it's beautiful. I like this car. I, I personally am attached to it because I'm an Italian American. And when you kind of start this car up, it sounds like a muscle car. So it looks Italian, but it sounds and feels like a muscle car. There you, you know? go. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful car, very rare. Uh, you, you'll probably never see another one um, in your lifetime. Sticker price. The price on this is $985,000. $985,000. I would be yeah. attached to this car as well if it was yeah, <laughs> over $985,000. Absolutely. Yeah. That's um, incredible. And, and they're, they're, they're very expensive to upkeep. You know, I, you got to say it up front. Maseratis are, are very timid, um, but uh, when you upkeep them and you maintain them, they can be fantastic, amazing cars. There is a, a market, a specific caliber of buyer who's buying these type of vintage cars. These Absolutely. Are, these are not the guy who's going to go rent a Lamborghini on the side on the weekend. This is a completely different buyer. Correct. Uh, you know, this is a type of uh, buyer that would show up maybe with an Apple watch and a white t-shirt and jeans. You know, okay. the, the, the clientele that purchase these cars um, aren't the ones to be discussing the cars that they have in their collection, um, in their garages. Um, you know, they're not flashy people. Yeah. They purchase these cars for themselves. Right. Um, they're not meant for, you know, uh, any showing type off of, and any, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, any right. type of attention. And these I, are also cars that aren't just your entry level type of collector cars. Got you it. You know, you have to have an established collection to, to purchase and own these. Um, you have to know where to get them serviced. Again, going back to the experts of, of knowing which puzzle pieces, you know, of where they need to go and how to maintain and, right. and stuff like that. So, so these are cars that someone would purchase if they have an established collection. So are you seeing any trends where, or just overall buyers that come in to the carriage house that are local or tri-state, or do you find that sometimes they'll come from an overseas or from across country? Absolutely, it's, our, our business is probably 50-50. 50% /50, 50 okay. uh, local business, um, and then 50% all over the country and world. Um, now with the internet, uh, it, it's a lot easier to purchase vehicles, buyers are, uh, a lot more aware of what they're buying and purchasing. So there's a lot more information right. about how to purchase these cars, what to look for, uh, and price evaluations. So, um, you know, people are feeling a lot more comfortable to purchase a car um, being in California from us and shipping right across the country. Beautiful. That being said, uh, Greenwich has a beautiful community um, with ties all over the world. So we still have a large clientele that is based right here in, in Greenwich. Awesome. All right, show me more. Absolutely. I mean, uh, while we're still here, we can talk about just some iconic cars. You know, uh, for me, um, this is a car that my father talked about um, that I would probably see maybe one or two in my lifetime. This is a 1963 split window Corvette. Wow. Um, 
This is the- This color, this red is outstanding. Absolutely, yeah. This is Riverside Red, uh, or in the, the dealer industry, we call it Resale Red. Resale I mean, you red, see yeah. this thing, uh, it makes you want to drive it. It's got this beautiful exhaust sound. It's, it's mean, it's aggressive. And you got to think, in 1960s, all the astronauts were driving Corvettes. You know, you were somebody uh, if, in America if you had this. You know, this was, this is about Americana as you could, as you can probably think. Wow. It's got all the styling cues of 60s aeronauticals, the gauges, the dash, the aluminum. Wow. I mean, it's just all 60s, all American. It's just- You it, have a little luau girl. Yeah, Look at that. a little even luau girl. So yeah, if, if you're an astronaut and you're going thousands of miles an hour up into space, it, it, what else are you gonna drive when you're on land, you know? And it's gotta be a Corvette. So, so this one's iconic because um, this is what we call a C2 Corvette. That's uh -huh. the second iteration of, of Corvette that was produced. So the second body style, let's right. say. Um, what makes this one special is this split window right here. This is the only year that they did it. And that's because people were having trouble seeing out the rear view mirror. So actually in the 60s, people were cutting these out because they couldn't see. So now to find a factory split window Corvette with the split is very rare. So rare, sticker price. This is 188,000. Okay. Yeah, seems like a bargain compared to its European counterparts, but still uh, a very iconic car. Um, it's such a cool car. Oh yeah, absolutely. Did you get to drive this? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah. one of the perks of the job. Oh, absolutely. Of taking this baby out. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell a car if I wouldn't drive it myself. You there you know? go. Um, so you drive. You've drove all the cars. Every single car that's in our sh facility, um, I drive. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Let's just say I don't work. I don't have a job. I just showed up one day and they. They were didn't like, "Here you go." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't ask me to leave. So. That is. Awesome. So Absolutely. this is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful car. All right, more, more, more. Yeah, this car is made famous by you know the James Dean. Steve yeah, this McQueen. car caught my attention when I came in. Absolutely. There's something about the look. And yeah. The, the so this color. is this is a, a 1957 Porsche Speedster. It's so simple. The, these cars were meant for speed and nothing else. If you look at it, it's got no radio. Yeah. It's no. got <laughs> it's got no windows. Um, it, it's got nothing. You know, this was only meant to be driven. Um, and that's what people do today with speedsters. Uh, this has got a, a 1.6 liter air-cooled four-cylinder engine. It's got a four-speed manual gearbox. Just an absolutely lovely car to drive. You know, again, it's such an iconic motor car because of all those Paul Newmans and Steve McQueens and James Dean, They're, you know. Yeah, this is that uh, style. This is what we would call a rolling sculpture. It, it really is a piece of art. You could put this in your living room, stare at it every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, when they come to you, do you ever get cars that could be really good that you guys have to spend time on refurbishing? Some cars can sit in collections uh, for years and years and years, and that's the worst thing that uh, that you could do to a car. Cars, at the end of the day, were all designed to be driven. Um, yeah. And they had no intentions to ever sit around. Um, so sometimes when you start a car up for the first time in five or six years, uh, you'll run into all sorts of problems. And when we sell a car, we can't sell them with those problems. So Got we it. have to start them up, we have to go through them. Right. You know, I've been broken down on the side of the road in some of these cars and you still can't wipe the smile off my face, you know? Um, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How often do you have to clean these? Uh, these cars need to be looked after and maintained almost every day. So they're cleaned um, every day? Cleaned every day, they're wiped down. Uh, we check the batteries, tire awesome. pressures, anything. It, 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 it's all about maintenance, it's all about taking care. Um, of the vehicle and, and temperature control in the room. Yes, uh, absolutely. Everything's dehumidified in here to keep the moisture down. Um, so we've created an environment um, to maximize the, the cars, the preservation exactly of the cars. Beautiful, so, awesome. Uh, we have a lower showroom down here and uh, we've got some great cars. Look at this. Yeah. This is a 1960 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. Uh, what makes this one special? It's a big car. It, it's a, it is a big car. It's 19 feet. If you think about that, that's the size of a, a Suburban. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's got two doors and it's a convertible. The interior is beautiful. It's yeah. blue. It's yeah. I mean, to, 
to think that this was a handcrafted car, I mean, you know, you had uh, a whole factory just hand forming the shapes and bodies of it. So not one single car made from Rolls Royce is exactly the same because they're hand built cars. Wow. So you can't just take a door off one car and put it on the other. You right. can't just take uh, a piece of wood from this handcrafted dash and just put it on another. Um, that's, that's the beauty of these handcrafted, handmade wow. um, vehicles. Outrageous. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. The price on this is 495,000. 495,000. Yeah. And I, I, the, the Porsche, we didn't, I didn't ask you about the, the Porsche. The Porsche, the 356 Speedster, that's 335,000. <sighs> and it's amazing. That Speedster, when it came out in 1957, was $3,000. So if you could have just held on to it? Right, exactly. In 57 and known? Right. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Just like Bitcoin. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, All that, right. that For, kind of the elephant in the room right now is, is this beautiful 1991 uh, US spec Ferrari F40. This is a very rare car. Uh, it's kind of the most iconic Ferrari of all time. Probably up there in terms of most iconic Ferraris next to the Ferrari GTO um, and, and some of its iconic race cars. Um, it, this is what we call a US spec because they made uh, a certain percentage just for the United States. Right. Um, which makes it extremely rare. What makes this one unique, not only being a US spec, is that it's had one single owner since 1991 until now. Really? Yeah. So, so, they, so he's they, done very well keeping this car. And when did, did that owner use it a fair amount or was it like I, I, they're buying it, they knew what this was when they bought it and then they kind of sell it back to you guys kind of thing? He used it a little bit. It's got about 3,000 miles on okay, it. Okay, so just a little bit. Just, he, just enough, but he knew and understood the value of the car and how important it was in terms of um, the brand and marketing um, of Ferrari. He, knew, he knew it was an investment. Look at this back. Absolutely. Talk yeah. a little bit about this. What, what did we got behind the end, behind the, uh, well, yeah. inside, in front of the hood, but over back here. Absolutely, it's a mid-engine. Everything about the Ferrari F40 is about racing. You know, this, this was a bent, essentially a street car, a race car for the street. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why the engine's in the back. It gives you better handling um, and they can control everything. The car is made of Kevlar, actually. Really? Um, instead of plastic or metal, and that yeah. was to save weight. Um, but it's got a, uh, a turbocharged V8 and a five-speed gearbox. So the car really does drive. It, this this it, one moves if you drive. This, absolutely. You know, this is one of the first cars that could actually reach over 200 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. Yeah. This was fun to drive? This is extremely fun to drive, <laughs> you know? And I don't get nervous driving cars, but because the price tag is above $2 million, this is the one that makes me- How much is this car? This is, I can't give you the exact okay. price, um, but it is over $2 million. Yeah. It's over $2 million. Over, over $2 million, yeah. Okay. I know what I want for my birthday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. This is beautiful. Yeah, it, this is a, a, an extremely rare example uh, it's a one owner, the 3,000 miles, uh, it's all original. All those factors um, combine in together to, to, the, to get to the sale price of over 2 million. Yep. I thought that one in the Mercedes was my favorite. Yeah. This but, is my favorite. Yeah, th this is such an icon. I mean, you look at this, even sitting here, right here, it looks aggressive. You know this is a fast car just by looking at it. It's yeah. the lines, it's the sleekness. Um, it, it's got a muscle feel to it, you know, it, it, it's just... Now, do you it, find a, a buyer or someone who's going to come in and look at a, like a 91 Ferrari sports car is a little different buyer that would look at the 50s or 60s Porsche or Mercedes or vintage Rolls or something like that? Absolutely, yeah. The, the clientele for um, the 80s and 90s cars right now, you know, the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, the Maseratis of that era, right. um, even some of the Mercedes and Alfa Romeos, um, they're the younger generation. Okay. Um, you know, the, 
the older generation uh, is going for the 60s and kind of early 70s cars. I think it's one of those things you really like to collect what you looked up to, yeah. um, what you saw on the street or what you really saw as success. You know, I, I, I've seen um, customers come to me and they, they say, I want to Aston Martin DB5. You know, I remember um, seeing it in a magazine and I said, if I can buy one of those, I know I've Now they're made coming it. of age exactly. where they've grown successfully. Um, and, and, you know, yeah. they have a garage, they have an empty space, and, and they're filling that dream. So they got to call yeah. Kyle Absolutely. at the carriage house in Greenwich, and he will get it for you. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we don't just sell stuff. We also, you know, the, the best part of being in this business for 52 years is uh, um, just being a part of the network and knowing where cars are. Yeah. Um, I know cars that have been in collections for over 30 years. Um, so, so we can source cars for people as well, um, you know, and, and we've sourced everything from new cars to vintage cars to race cars for awesome. people. This is great. This is a 1959 uh, Rolls-Royce uh, Silver Cloud Estate Wagon. What makes this one unique is they only made four estate wagons. So this is a, a coach-built car and you got, so the, you got the luggage got in the back and everything. Factory fitted luggage. It's oh, got wow. That's cool. um, trays in the back. So this is again what I was saying earlier with the cloud. Right. Um, the convertible is something that would you would drive. This is more of a car that you would be driven in. It's 19 How feet. much does it weigh? Uh, it's about uh, two tons. So Jeez. it's a very heavy car. <laughs> yeah. And the beauty is it only has a six cylinder engine. Wow. So, so it is a little on the slower side but uh, it's so quiet, you don't even know it's running. Wow. Even has a, a retractable sunroof. Wow. Yeah, um, look at that. Yeah. You were living in the lap of luxury. What's the uh, sticker on this? The price on this car is 850,000. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's beautiful color combination. You drive this up to maybe um, Northern Westchester yeah. and uh, go for a picnic. Or sure. A nice little drive. Watch your, your horse. A polo or something. Yeah, exactly. This is what they call a Fiat Jolly. And they call it okay. Jolly because you look at it and it just makes you happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these started because Johnny Anelli, who was the CEO of Fiat at the time in the, the late 50s, early 60s, he wanted something that he could take off his yacht and put onto any type of island that he went to, okay. Capri or... Um, anything like that. And so this is what they kind of came up with. And it was uh, <laughs> a Fiat the 500 with the roof cut off yeah. and, and, and just really made as a beach vehicle. I mean, they're, they're super fun, super enjoyable. They're actually really great to drive. It has a two cylinder air cooled engine. Nice. Um, but yeah, the, these have become Look extremely popular. Doors. Yeah, it's got rope, wicker seats, wicker yeah. basket. Um, How fast know. do these go? I've actually taken these on the highway, and no. they do, yeah, they do. You've about, taken this on the highway? Yeah, they People do. People must about, look at you like, what, what's absolutely. going on? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah, I did a test drive with a woman, and that's the last time I do a test yeah. drive on the highway. But they go about 55 miles an hour. You got to remember, um, the, the Fiat 500, you know, millions were produced in in Italy, and they still use them today. If you go to Rome, I mean, you know, parked on the street is a Fiat 500. Right. Um, so it was built as an everyday car. This one just has the doors and roof off of it. Awesome. So what's yeah. the sticker price on this? Yeah, we can get them in different colors for different people, but the price on them is $73,500. Kyle, thank you so much for having us. We learned so much today and I'm blown away with how beautiful these cars are. Your tour is amazing. Uh, the Greenwich Carriage House. Where can more people find and learn and get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. First off, thanks for stopping by. I, I really appreciated taking your time to come see us. Um, you guys can come see us at uh, www.carriagehousemotorcars.com. Uh, you can reach out to me directly uh, by email, kyle at carriagehousemotorcars.com. Um, and you can find us on Instagram at carriagehousemotorcars. So if you have any questions about cars um, or just want to stop by and have fun, you know, we have uh, these beautiful little cars that people can bring their kids and sit These are in. like my size cars, so I could drive these. Right, cars. exactly. Yeah, it's a whole family event. Awesome, everybody. So thank you so much for watching. Click, subscribe, share. Until next time, everybody, Mike Ferraro, LLA. Take care.